happens when you put rosemary leaves in a jar of alcohol? Studies show that rosemary can help improve memory and cognition. It can also help increase blood flow to the brain to relieve headaches, especially migraines. So you want to know what happens when you put rosemary in a bottle of alcohol? It creates a tincture that can have powerful memory benefits. Take 15 to 30 drops up to three times a day. Rosemary also works as an anti-inflammatory, an antifungal, and can aid digestion. It has also been shown to help prevent hair loss just as effectively as the drug minoxidil. If this is your first time hearing about how to turn kitchen ingredients into medicine, we've got to catch you up. You can find complete recipes for homemade morphine, arthritis relief, antibiotics, and other natural remedies that are at risk of being forgotten for good. To learn how to easily identify 800 plus plants with step-by-step -step recipes, keep watching our free presentation. Today I want to show you what happens if you pour hot water over a banana. This is one of my favorite remedies to take just before bed. Bananas are high in potassium and magnesium. These two minerals improve the length as well as the quality of your sleep. They also help relax your muscles so that your sleep will be as calm as possible. But banana peels also contain something else called tryptophan. This amino acid plays an important role in the production of serotonin and melatonin, two sleep-inducing hormones. So what happens when you pour hot water over a banana? You get a natural sleep aid promoting tea. Here's how I do it. Gently but thoroughly wash a whole banana with running water. This is to ensure that you remove germs and chemicals that are present in the peel. To avoid chemicals such as fertilizers, I always opt to get organic bananas. Cut both ends of the banana. Boil the water in a small saucepan. Once boiling, add the banana to it. If the banana is too big for the saucepan, you can cut it in half. Lower the heat and simmer for 10 minutes. Remove the pan from the heat. Strain the banana and enjoy your tea before bedtime. If you'd like, you can add a pinch of cinnamon for taste. And if blood sugar is a concern to you, just use a banana peel instead of the whole fruit. Hi, I'm Dr. Nicola Pellian. I'm an herbalist, and I've studied plants and natural remedies for the past 20 years. I got my undergraduate degree at McGill University, my master's at the University of Oregon, and my PhD at Prescott College but I was never afraid of dirt time. I've studied plants on the savanna and have lived and worked with one of the last remaining San Bushman tribes of the Kalahari. In 2015, I was among the first women to be selected for the History Channel's TV show, Alone. I then went on to survive for 57 days straight in the wild with little more than my knife and the plants that I found there. But what I'm probably known best for is making powerful remedies. I've helped thousands of people treat themselves naturally after following my advice and taking my remedies. In most cases, that advice can be boiled down to just three teachings. In the first lesson, you'll discover the one most important thing you should never take for granted, but probably do. It almost killed me. As you look at me right now as I'm talking to you, you can't see it, but I have a terrible and incurable disease. When the first symptoms appeared, I didn't give them much credence. I was just 29 when I started feeling tired all the time. I would lose my balance every now and then, and I felt some tingling in my feet. Then, one day, as I was flying home to see my parents, all of a sudden, I lost my eyesight in one eye. I remember I was in my seat panicking and constantly rubbing my eye, thinking it's just something that would go away. The doctors did an MRI and said I had a clear-cut case of multiple sclerosis, a crippling autoimmune disease. They put me on medication, a lot of medication. Soon, I couldn't go to work anymore. I was slowly losing control of my own body. My disease kept me bedbound most of the time. On good days, I could still walk using a cane. I bought a house that was wheelchair accessible. The expectations were that I would be in a wheelchair the rest of my life in the best case scenario. I was continuously in pain. It was agonizing. It often felt like I was being burned with a cigarette lighter. But the fear of having to depend on others for simple things like going to the toilet was even worse. This was supposed to be my new life, the new normal. 
Life changes when you get sick. Everything suddenly takes a back seat. Your priorities shift, but they shift to where they should have been all along. It's ironic that our health seems more valuable only after we lose it. Without it, we have nothing. Everything else can be rebuilt. Instead, we spend most of our time trying to make more money and almost no time preserving our health. It's only once we are in a hospital bed or sick at home that we appreciate it. Tomorrow, your life might change completely, so don't take health for granted. Don't wait for it to deteriorate to take care of it. In my case, the life I was living became unbearable. This led me to pour all my time and my resources into the biggest medical research of my life. But the thing I found out didn't just put me on the path to recovery, it ended up saving many other sick people as well. You might not realize it, but the only thing that healed you every time you got sick was your immune system. That's your inner doctor. I'll give you an example that will clarify this. When someone has HIV, their inner doctor becomes very, very weak to the point that every common cold is life-threatening. No matter how many powerful pills that person takes, when their inner doctor becomes too weak, their fate is sealed. I'm pretty sure you've also heard about accident victims being given survival chances by their physicians. 50%, 20%. That's because their treatment could only take you so far. Medicine is not math. That's only because we all have a different inner doctor. That's also the reason we all get different chances. And one of the reasons we respond differently to the same medication. Many pills are slowly killing the doctor inside you. That's why a person with a weak inner doctor is more likely to develop cancer. For example, people infected with HIV are about 500 times more likely to be diagnosed with a certain type of cancer. One of the reasons cancer was very rare 150 years ago is that back then, people had a healthy inner doctor. There were no pills, so they had to have a strong immune system if they were to survive. That's also one of the reasons why autoimmune diseases were not common at all. Conventional medicine typically works by fighting and suppressing the immune system even more, making him sicker and sicker. We've all seen a 90-year-old that still works in the garden every day and doesn't have any joint pain or many health problems at all. My grandmother, an avid walker and gardener, could outwalk us even in her later years. On the other hand, we all know people who feel and look 70 when they are barely past 50, bedridden with all sorts of diseases or with their time cut short. This is the true cost of taking pills over a long period of time. Most of the times, one pill will lead to another, just like I did. But there is something that heals it and makes it stronger, stronger than it has ever been. We'll find out about it in lesson number three, taking charge of your inner doctor. Think about all the good things that have happened in your life, especially the most important ones. My guess is that they were all done by you. Whenever you took matters into your own hands, you did great things. Whenever we become lazy, the exact opposite happens. As the old folks used to say, if you want something done right, do it yourself. No matter if it's raising a child, buying a house, or doing an important task at work, when it really matters a great deal, you won't just leave it up to someone else and hope for the best. If I hadn't taken matters into my own hands, I would have probably been stuck in bed, having my 16 and 11 year old kids taking care of me instead of me taking care of them. Ignorance is the worst disease. It cripples thousands of people daily. Investigate, believe, but doubt. Of course, your physician means well. Follow his or her advice, but explore other options too. Most of the times, the recommendations will treat symptoms, but not the root cause. All these pills may have devastating side effects if taken over long periods of time, but there is something that can truly help. For me, it changed my life. I went from bedridden to traveling all over the world and enjoying every bit of my life while taking good care of my children and doing things that even healthy people can't do like surviving 57 days alone in the wilderness with little more than a knife. I manage my MS using a very specific combination of nature-provided nutrients, minerals, and most importantly, three simple tinctures that I take almost every day. These are the ones that worked for me. That's why, right now, I want to invite you inside my world of remedies. I want to share with you everything I've discovered about medicinal plants because as pills weaken or even fight the only one that can heal you, some natural substances found in nature, even some backyard plants, are making him stronger. Our ancestors used these plants long before we existed.
but they lacked something that we know today. With the help of modern science, we can now distinguish the plants with powerful healing properties from the bogus folk remedies. We can now pinpoint the substances in nature that act like an antibiotic, an antiviral, or for the ones that are helping. That's because now we know the mechanics behind a disease. Our great-grandparents didn't even know that the root cause of an infection were tiny little creatures we now call bacteria or viruses. I was so inspired by my recovery that it became my life's mission to help others achieve their own. I edited all my manuscripts with all the plant knowledge I've gathered over the last 20 years. I sorted out only the most powerful medicinal plants, tinctures that really work, strong decoctions, infusions, salves, extracts, syrup, poultices, and place them in one book so that you can take advantage of them. It's called The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, The Power of Plant Medicine. And here's just a glimpse of what you'll find in it. With hundreds of healing plants, I knew I had to find a way for people to quickly pinpoint the one they need. So when you open your new book, you'll find not only an index with the medicinal plants, but also an index with diseases and afflictions. I also included color photographs and easy to follow identification descriptions. There is also an easy to follow alphabetized appendix so you can easily find a plant or illness. For example, this is one of the plants you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. I'm pretty sure it looks familiar because it grows in most American backyards and most people weed it out. But what they don't know is that this plant contains a powerful milky substance called lactocarium. While this substance doesn't contain any opiates, it has similar effects acting directly on the central nervous system to lessen the feeling of pain. Inside the book, you'll find full instructions on how to turn it into a pain-killing extract. I'll also show you the common U.S. driveway weed that has become the most expensive and sought-out plant in Venezuela after the pharmacies ran dry. You'll also find two plants that I've used many times. On day 42 of The Alone Show, I accidentally cut my knuckle while gutting a fish. The wound was very deep and most likely would have gotten infected. Luckily, I found yarrow, which, besides its antibiotic properties, quickly stops bleeding by contracting the blood vessels. And, most importantly, I found usnea, a powerful antibiotic you've probably already seen growing on tree trunks. I dressed my wound for three days with these, and it healed so well that now you can barely see the scar anymore. On page 55, you'll find out the strange thing that happens when you pour salt into a cabbage. The end remedy offers some of the best protection possible for your digestive tract, regulating bowel movement and preventing both diarrhea and constipation. Of course, in the book, you'll also discover the three herbal tinctures I'm using to manage my MS. Because MS is an autoimmune disease, you should know that all three tinctures are effective remedies that can be used for other autoimmune disorders. One of the tinctures that I'm taking daily is an adaptogen. That means it decreases the biological and oxidative stress of the diseases, fights chronic inflammation, and repairs damaged tissue. Unlike Humira, methotrexate, or other medication that suppress your inner doctor, the other two tinctures have an immunomodulatory effect. One works by balancing the nerve growth factor, which, besides nourishing connections between neurons, has a pro or anti-inflammatory effect depending on the case. So while usually the nerve growth factor keeps the immune system on high alert, when the inner doctor is already activated, causing inflammation or tissue damage, the nerve growth factor sends a signal to calm it back down. According to a 2017 medical study published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences, nerve growth factor activates pathways necessary to dampen the inflammatory response and limit tissue damage. That's probably why nerve growth factor has been discovered in the cerebrospinal fluid of multiple sclerosis patients, in the synovial fluids of rheumatoid arthritis, in the sera of patients with lupus, and so on. It shows the body's effort to avoid excessive inflammation in that area. I could go on and on about the biology behind it, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. What matters is that they helped me and many of my patients get our lives back. The nerve growth factor also plays a tremendous role in helping people with neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. These three remedies will not cure these diseases. So far, nothing can, 
and anyone claiming otherwise is just giving desperate people false hope. But by strengthening the connections between neurons, they may add more good years for those of us afflicted by these terrible conditions. This one that you'll find on page 221 is a fast acting treatment for irregular heartbeats. You'll also discover a tree called slippery elm. The inner bark of this tree contains a substance called mucilage. When taken orally, mucilage becomes slit and coats the mucous membranes in the intestinal tract, soothing inflammation, relieving pain, and giving bowels a much needed rest to heal themselves. One of the most powerful Native American ointments was made from what they called the tree of peace. This Haudenosaunee ointment that we almost lost to history relieves back, knee, neck, shoulder, ankle, and wrist pain caused by arthritis. The active compound in this ointment was found to be pycnogenol, which inhibits the inflammatory chemical signals in our body and provides mobility to joints. A review of three randomized, double-blind, and placebo-controlled medical studies of middle-aged patients suffering from osteoarthritis found that it reduced the pain by roughly 42%, stiffness by around 43%, and physical performance improved by an average of 44%. You'll also find out the plant that boosts energy and relieves foot pain. Another plant you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies is Bone Set, which can easily be turned into one of the most powerful antipyretics. This means that it drastically reduces a fever. In fact, the name bone set was derived from the plant's use in the treatment of breakbone fever. As we age, men get an inflamed prostate, while women develop what's called an overactive bladder. The name is different, but the result is the same. It starts with more and more frequent bathroom trips, some at 3 a.m. that will cost you a good night's sleep and leave you feeling dizzy the next day. Luckily, there is a very effective remedy for both. One will flush out and prevent urine buildup, while the other will take care of the underlying inflammation which affects the muscles. But there is a side effect. Some people following this treatment experience a tremendous surge in their sex drive. On page 203, you'll find a gorgeous plant that regulates thyroid hormones, helping people with hypothyroidism increase their energy levels and lose weight. You will also find a plant that has a high concentration of chromium. Several studies have now demonstrated that chromium controls the metabolic action of insulin. One of them showed that a 10-month treatment with chromium in 833 patients with type 2 diabetes significantly reduced their fasting glucose levels beginning with the first month. Chromium is extremely rare nowadays because of the food processing methods that remove most of the naturally occurring chromium from foods. Maybe this is one of the reasons why type 2 diabetes is so common today, but 100 years ago, it was a rarely occurring disease. While our grandparents consumed almost every part of this plant, today it has become invisible to most Americans. Allergies are not to be taken lightly. On page 169, you'll find a plant called butterbur. This plant is so special because it contains antihistamines. When butterbur was compared in a randomized controlled trial with cetirizine, the active ingredient in Zyrtec, although the results were the same, Butterbur didn't produce the sedative side effects associated with cetirizine. Same results, no money, fewer side effects. If you ever have to go out foraging, will you know which one of these plants is edible, which one is a remedy for high blood pressure and tension, and which one is poisonous? The Native Americans knew all too well, and probably our grandparents did too. But very few people nowadays could give the correct answer. As a survivalist, I can tell you that this kind of skill will set you apart from your group during dark times, and will probably turn you into their guide, or even their savior. I'm sure that you've seen this plant too. It grows in most forest glades. You'll discover how to use it effectively to treat not only only common colds, but lung infections as well. Also, breathing in the steam from leaves that have been boiled in water will immediately calm the asthma attack. This is probably why, a hundred years ago, people with asthma didn't die from it. On page 200, you'll also discover a plant called Pipsisawa, which in Cree means to break up into small pieces. That's because of its ability to break up and dissolve painful kidney stones. This plant also contains a substance called hydroquinone, which disinfects the urinary system and heals inflammation of the bladder. If you've ever walked through the edges of a woodland and gotten some sticky burrs attached to your clothing, you can bet you've just passed by this plant. The best way to deal with this annoying weed? Eat it. Native Americans used it as a sweetener 200 years ago, and it tastes better than most greens I know. What people don't know is that this plant is also a strong diuretic for poor blood circulation. People who use it can go from dizzy and tired most of the time to having an excess of energy in a few weeks. Another plant you'll find inside is called woolly lamb's ear. 
also known as backyard bandage, this weed has been used for centuries on battlefields to stop bleeding. It's been recently discovered that it's high in vitamin K, the vitamin that coagulates the blood. It's the same powdered vitamin that we gave our soldiers in World War II to pour over the wound in case they were shot. A plant for a strong heart is called kudzu. This invasive weed has one very powerful property. It expands the arteries and vessels, lowering the blood pressure and unlocking blood flow. And in doing so, it helps treat a lot of problems like swollen feet or cold hands. No matter where you live in America, there's a source of water nearby. And when there's water, there are cattails. If you find cattails, you'll have everything you need for survival. Water, food, shelter, and fuel. Cattails are edible, but few people know what is probably the most important thing about them, the jelly-like substance that grows between its leaves. It is very good for severe skin infections. On a different note, this gel is the only part of the cattail that is widely considered to be inedible. It's not poisonous, so why? Well, because it has a powerful numbing effect on moist tissues and has been used as a Novocaine substitute in the past. Yes, it's an anesthetic. When the pioneers were hit with a ravaging toothache, they would just go and get their jar of cattail ooze and rub it around their gums. The pain would subside in minutes. On page 57, you'll find a very special plant that can prevent five out of every six visits to the doctor. The sap of this plant is mildly narcotic. It is similar in the medical effect to the opium poppy, but it is much milder in its action and does not depress the central nervous system. It aids in treating sleep deprivation, anxiety, and nervous tension. Not only is this completely legal, but it is also a pretty common plant. I advise people to take it at bedtime as a simple infusion. Unlike sleeping pills, this plant is not addictive and doesn't have any known side effects. Usually sleeping pills induce sleep by artificially lowering heart rate. You'll also discover the plants that I use in my leaky gut herbal blend. The leaky gut blend not only heals the gut, but also decreases gut inflammation and helps balance your gut flora. Another plant you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies is St. John's Wort. It got that name from its uncanny ability to bloom exactly on June 24th, the birthday of St. John the Baptist. This plant has two major uses. The oil of St. John's Wort is a highly effective cure for hemorrhoids. It reduces inflammation and relieves pain. Use the recipe for St. John's Wort extracted oil and apply topically to the affected area. It's so simple. The tincture made from St. John's Wort is probably the most powerful natural antidepressant that you can make at home. Unlike synthetic drugs, St. John's Wort tincture has no side effects and it's not addictive. We all have our ups and downs, but sometimes staying too much in a slump can cause serious health problems. The main ingredient in St. John's Wort is hypericin, a substance that leads to increased dopamine levels by blocking an enzyme that would normally turn it into something else, depleting levels of dopamine. In the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, you'll probably also find folk remedies that our grandparents gave us to bring down fever, cure sore throat, banish the flu, and many more. They used only common household items. This is just a tiny, small glimpse of what you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. Really, there's too much to say here. There are hundreds of remedies you'll find in this book. The index has literally 20 pages with just the diseases and the afflictions covered in this book. This is what 20 years of medical research and practicing natural medicine looks like. But there's more that you're going to get. If you get the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies today, you'll also take advantage of two exclusive gifts that will be 